a lot of what I am going to say based on the sum of evidence is even in some instances, like with the first ones we're going to talk about, SSRIs, it's really debated on, on the degree to which they actually are effective for, uh, for mental health. So please don't take what I'm about to say as my own endorsement for the use of these drugs. I think it's very appropriate for people to um, really dig through the the data and, of course, working with your medical provider, uh, make sure that you are actually embracing an approach that will work. But having said all that, let's start with the first one, as, as debated as it is, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs. So the mechanism whereby these work is, and this is drugs like fluoxetine, sertraline, um, and more, um, they function by increasing serotonin in the brain. Now, this does have a spillover effect of increasing serotonin in the systemic circulation or in the blood outside of the brain. But by inhibiting the reuptake, the serotonin stays at that what's called a neural cleft and now can spill around throughout the brain and throughout the body. Um, but because of the higher serotonin, it is thought to help stabilize mood and reduce symptoms of depression and anxiety with admittedly some conflicting results. Now, what about the metabolic consequences? The long-term use of SSRIs is associated with weight gain and insulin resistance. Um, despite a little initial weight loss, it tends to be weight gain um, happening. And this is generally thought to itself be a process of an increased appetite. Now, not an increased appetite for everything, as you'll see in some of the show note links. Um, this always appears to be particular to something that is sweet and gooey or salty and crunchy. In other words, carb heavy. Okay, the next class of medications, these are the TCAs or the tricyclic antidepressants. These are drugs like amitriptyline or doxepin. Um, and this blocks the reuptake of serotonin and norepinephrine. So it's increasing both of them. Um, but it also can affect other signaling molecules like histamine and acetylcholine in their receptors. So I've introduced now a couple other neurotransmitters, even though I said I wouldn't, but they are part of this TCA family. Um, and again, the side effect here being an improved mood. That's the mental health mechanism. But there are some metabolic consequences. TCAs are strongly associated with weight gain, insulin resistance, and dyslipidemia, so higher triglycerides. The increase in appetite, once again, particularly for carbohydrates, coupled with a reduced metabolic rate, as seen commonly with these medications, really does contribute to some pretty significant weight gain. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors, MAOIs. Um, this is um, probably the most common of these drugs is phenyl phenylzine. And these prevent the breakdown of serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine, so all of them, increasing their levels in the brain and thereby um, generally providing some relief from depression. Um, these aren't as prescribed as often nowadays, but these MAOIs are associated with weight gain and insulin resistance due to some of the changes in the appetite regulation and systemic fat cell metabolism. Okay, next class. Atypical antipsychotics. These are used for depression and anxiety. Um, these are one of the more common ones, um, like um, olanzapine, for example. And this works by modulating dopamine and serotonin receptors. And it's thought to then help stabilize mood and anxiety and manage even some more serious psychotic symptoms or symptoms of, of deeper psychoses. Uh, that's the mental health focus, um, which again, I'm not a neuroscientist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm the metabolic guy. So let's move on to the metabolic consequences. These drugs are strongly linked to severe weight gain, insulin resistance, and metabolic syndrome that follows. They also can disrupt appetite regulation by affecting hunger and satiety signals in the brain, which will often lead to uh, much greater consumption of food in general, but all, once again, a craving for high carbohydrate foods, uh, either alone or with fats. Additionally, these drugs have been shown to directly impair glucose metabolism, um, thereby increasing the risk of type 2 diabetes.